Ugh, another message from Barman. Getting a message from Barman in the morning is depressing. It's always about some sarcastic remark, like, another delivery has arrived. Does she have nothing else to say? Does she really need to bother me with this kind of message? Instead of contacting me for something to pass the time, she should find something enjoyable to do. Barman really has too much time on her hands, always worrying about other people's affairs. It's true that my house is poorer compared to Barman's, but I'm not so poor and pitiful that I have to be ridiculed by Barman every day like this. Because my house is poorer, Barman thinks I'm getting food from my parents. So every day, she contacts me and finds it amusing to do so. I don't want to see Barman's face, but since her house is across from mine, I have to see her every day. Plus, Barman is like the boss in this neighborhood. So to live here without problems, I have to be smart and get along without making a fuss. It's so suffocating every day. Speaking of which, I just got another message from Barman. Bye message. Good morning, Morga. Looks like you received another package today. Good morning, Barman. Yes, I did receive a package. Every day, your family is lucky to receive food from your parents' house. Your family is poor, so you need to receive food from your parents' house every day to make ends meet. That's not true. I think I've told you before, but we're not receiving food from my hometown. I don't think you believe me, though. It's okay. You don't have to pretend. I won't tell anyone. It's not good to lie and pretend that your family receives food from your hometown when they don't. It doesn't benefit anyone. Is that so? Yes, it is. People might think that this neighborhood is full of poor people. Besides, a town with many poor people doesn't look good, does it? Ah, uh, I see. Unlike me, you're rich, Barman. Your husband is a doctor and your house is the biggest in the neighborhood. Really? I don't think my house is that big. It's not that great. There are plenty of people living in bigger houses than mine, but it's true that it's bigger than your house. Oh, your house is newly built, right? Huh? That's not right, is it? That can't be. Your house was not newly built. It was a second-hand house, right? That's right. Our house is not newly built. It's a second-hand house. It can't compare to your house. If your house is big, you can invite a lot of people, right? So I think that people with good relationships tend to live in big houses. Also, if the house is big and new, it's easy for people of our generation to socialize, right? Right? Don't you think so too? You're right. People who live in big and new houses like you can invite many friends and have a wide and good circle of friends, I suppose. You understand it very well, even though you're poor, unlike me. By the way, can I ask you something that's been bothering me? Of course. What is it that makes you so curious about our house? I contacted you this morning, too. But packages are delivered every day, right? Yes, what about it? Why do packages arrive every day? I mean, your house is poor, right? Yet there's enough money to send packages from your parents' house every day? I'm always just curious about it. I thought it was none of my business. But I'm curious why packages are delivered to your poor house every day. I wanted to ask you about it. Actually, it's not just from my family. Huh, really? I thought most of the packages were from your family. We talked about this before, remember? I think I mentioned it before, but most of the packages are from my family, but some of them are from online shopping. But your family is poor, right? Can you really afford to buy things so much every day? But are you really not receiving help from your friends instead of online shopping? That's it, isn't it? Because there's no way you can afford to order something every day for your house, right? That's really not the case. I'm not receiving help from my friends. Online shopping is just really convenient and I tend to use it a lot. It's okay. I'm sorry for asking such rude questions. I guess I made you try to show off, but I won't tell anyone. It's really fortunate for you to receive help from friends too. That's not it. I'm really not receiving help from my friends. Oh, it's okay. I asked too much, so I'm sorry for everything. Anyway, there's something else that's been bothering me. Something else that's bothering you? What is it? Um, I don't know if it's okay to ask, but you know that man who wears a black suit and comes to your house occasionally? Uh, yes, the man in the black suit. He does come to my house from time to time, yes. 
I know I don't have to say this, but we're neighbors and I live across from you, so I'll just come out and say it. Morga, even if your husband's salary is low and you're fed up, cheating is absolutely not okay when you have adorable children. Even if you're poor, you absolutely cannot cheat. What will you do if your children find out that you're cheating? Just thinking about it hurts my heart. Um, Barman, I'm not cheating, you know. The man in the black suit is just a customer, not a lover or anything like that. It seems like there's some sort of misunderstanding here. I love my husband and I would never betray my children, even if we live a poor life. Yeah, right. It's not like people who cheat admit to it so easily, is it? I can't believe he's just a regular customer. If you're cheating, it could be a big problem if you get caught. Especially since I live right across from you, Morga. You understand that if I find out, it'll be a big problem for you, right? Barman, I'm really not cheating. I'm telling the truth. I'm just a regular customer. Morga, I want to help the poor too. And we've been good neighbors so far, but... I can't stand dirty people. Wait a minute, Barman, did you listen to what I said? I'm not cheating. Morga, I'm sorry, but you're cheating on your husband with the man in the black suit. I'll tell everyone in town about it. No, please don't do that. I have been covering for you until now, but I cannot forgive someone who cheats. No matter what happens, I won't forgive it. I'll make sure everyone knows that you're cheating and that you're a dirty person, no matter what. Hey, I'm not cheating, and no matter how poor we are, I love my husband. Even though we're poor, we're happy as a family with our children. Please don't spread lies about me to everyone. Barman. Morga, you know that I have money, a big house, and lots of friends in this neighborhood. You understand that, don't you? Yes. Even if you say you're not cheating, who will believe you? We have to punish you for the sake of maintaining good order and preventing negative influence on the children in our neighborhood. You understand that, don't you, Morga? But I'm not cheating. It's a big mistake, Morga. Soliloquy. She is making some unfounded assumptions. But what should I do? I'm sure the rumors will spread quickly. I've only been living here for six months because of my husband's job, but people are more likely to believe someone like Barman, who has been living here for years and is like a boss around here, than to trust someone like me. Barman's husband is a doctor and is highly respected in this town, and he's also a very kind person. On the other hand, Barman is always harsh with her words and lacks compassion, and her appearance is flashy. I don't really like her. I've been able to manage things well with so far, but this time, what should I do? It's going to turn into a big mess. Barman's children and mine are very close since we live in the same neighborhood, but I've seen them making fun of poor families just like their parents. Still, I want to avoid conflicts with my neighbors. I've been patient so far, but Barman is really stressing me out. She doesn't listen no matter how many times I try to explain our situation, and she keeps labeling us as a poor family. It's impossible to have a conversation with her. Even though I've told her repeatedly that it was just a client, she won't believe me, and she keeps insisting that I cheated. I'm really at a loss. I've been managing things well so far, but I don't know what to do this time. I don't want any strange rumors to spread. But Barman is a neighbor who lives right across from me, and I want to avoid any trouble. Some days later. Hi, Morga. Good afternoon. Hi, Barman. Morga, I'm having lunch with the moms from our class. Do you want to come? Now, it's rare for you to invite me, Barman. That's not true. I'm inviting you right now. Was I not invited to the lunch with the mom friends from our class today, or was it a miscommunication? No, I didn't invite you in the first place. We can't invite someone who cheats during the day. Barman, like I said before, I'm not cheating on anyone. It's all a misunderstanding. That doesn't matter anymore. All the mom friends have decided to stop hanging out with someone like you who cheats. That's not true, Barman. I never did anything to deserve being cut off by my mom friends. No one wants to associate with someone like you who cheats. It's your own doing, isn't it? It's all a misunderstanding, Barman. I've explained it to you so many times. Please believe me already. Anyway, I wanted to let you know that I won't have anything to do with you from now on, Morga. I can't accept that I'm being harassed by my mom friends because of your misunderstanding. You say it's just my misunderstanding. Even so, all my mom friends want to stop having anything to do with you. This is just too much. That's why I've told my mom friends to block your messages. And we won't say hello to each other anymore. Not just me, but all my mom friends. This is just too cruel. I haven't done anything wrong. And yet I have to suffer like this because of your misunderstanding. 
I haven't done anything to deserve this extreme harassment, and I can't believe that all my mom friends are just listening to your side of the story and doing this to me. I just can't accept this. Morga, it seems like you haven't reflected on your actions at all. I'm just speaking the truth. I'm saying that I didn't do it because I didn't do it. We have no intention of associating with someone like Morga who cheats on their partner. Please don't even say hello to us from now on. Also, we've been friends with you despite your poverty, but now we don't want to be seen as poor ourselves because of you. So please don't have anything to do with us from now on, okay? Barman, as I've told you many times before, I haven't cheated on anyone. Morga, even though your actions have led to the situation, you still refuse to acknowledge it? You haven't reflected on your behavior at all. It's a misunderstanding on your part, Barman, and I'm not as poor as you think I am. Are you really not poor, Morga? I can't believe it. I don't want to have anything to do with you, Morga, who all of us mom friends know now is a cheater. Even though I've explained it to you so many times, you still don't believe me, Barman. I've seen a man in a black suit go into your house many times. I've explained many times that he's not my lover, he's just a client. Please don't spread false information to others because of your misunderstanding. And please don't refuse to even say hello. I'm not spreading false information, I'm just saying what I saw. If parents are doing things like this, children will notice, won't they? It won't have a good influence on them, so can you stop this? It's really sad for children to know that their parents are behaving like this. Morga, don't you think it's despicable to talk about your child to gain sympathy when it's your own fault? I haven't done anything cowardly. I'm just saying it's not right for all the mom friends to be told lies about me and be harassed when I haven't done anything. You really haven't learned your lesson, Morga. Who do you think will believe your lies? What you're saying? It's not that I haven't learned my lesson. I just want you to believe me. All right, if that's the attitude you're going to take, then don't come to the neighborhood gathering next month. Why do I have to be told that? I'm banning you from coming and going, okay? People like you are despicable and poor and will ruin the atmosphere. Please stop it. Barman, I have my limits too. If you apologize to me, I'll forgive everything that's happened and this harassment too. What do you say, Barman? Why should I apologize to you, Morga? You should be the one apologizing, right? You're poor and even cheated, so you should be saying sorry, right? I have nothing to apologize to you, so stop saying stupid things. Is that so? What's with that attitude? I want to see a video not only apologizing to us, but also apologizing to your husband and children. I can't meet your expectations, Barman. Before the cheating becomes any more important, isn't it necessary to apologize to your husband? Show us a video apologizing to your family too. It seems that you really enjoy making fun of people, Barman, but I won't apologize to my husband or my children. Of course, not to you either. I will never apologize because I didn't cheat. I see. If you say so, then you don't have to apologize. But if you don't reflect on your actions, I'll have to tell my child to avoid any relationships with your child too, you know? I understand well. I have my limits too. Morga, do you understand your position? I understand my position well enough. It's better to apologize now. You'll regret it later. Lastly, just my advice. What will you do? Will you apologize to all your mom friends now? Some days later. Hi, barman. Oh, hello there. I'm quite busy these days preparing for the neighborhood gathering and trying to bring everyone together. Oh, but I guess you wouldn't know how busy it can be since you're not involved in the gathering, right? Are you really that important that you have to bring everyone together? Of course. Who else is going to do it if not me? Everyone needs me, especially since my husband is a doctor. Isn't that just your misunderstanding, Barman? Well, I wouldn't call it a misunderstanding. It's not like that at all. Is that really because of your husband's profession? But you're not a doctor yourself, are you? No, I'm not a doctor. Then why do you think you're so important? Because I'm a doctor's wife. My husband's status is my status. You know what I mean? So I'm more important than you and other mom friends. Do you get it? I think that's a misconception on your part. But everyone else thinks so, don't they? Everyone has to follow what I say. That's why the preparations for the bazaar are going so smoothly under my guidance. If that's the case, then I'm actually more important to you, Barman. What are you talking about all of a sudden? Well, according to what you said earlier, a husband's status is a wife's status. So what? I don't see how you could possibly be above me. Is that so? 
My husband is the head of the internal medicine department at General Hospital. Your status can't possibly be higher than mine, Morga. Your house isn't big. It's secondhand anyway. You're definitely not above me. Don't make me laugh. Actually, my husband is the director of the hospital where your husband works. What are you talking about? That's not funny. Don't try to make me laugh with jokes like that. I'm not joking. That's the truth. My husband is the director of the general hospital. That's impossible. You're lying, right? Because the director is much older and can't be your husband, Morga. That's right. Until recently, it was an older director. That director was my husband's father. But because of his age, there was a generational change. That's why we moved here. And at that timing, the director became my husband from his father. That's impossible because... Barman, did you know nothing about the hospital? Did your husband not tell you anything? Excuse me, but are you communicating well with your husband? Th that's besides the point. If you really are the wife of the director, where are the gifts that arrive at your house every day? I've explained many times that they're not just from my family home. Things from online shopping are also delivered. Because I'm also doing it for my father-in-law. It's quite a lot. They arrive every day. That sounds like an excuse. I don't know what's inside, so I don't know if it's true or not. So who's that man in the suit? He must be your affair. Barman, I've explained this to you many times before, even though you didn't believe me at all. He must be your affair. The man in the suit is actually a foreign buyer from the department store. I have a really good relationship with my husband, so if I were cheating, he would have found out immediately. Oh, um, that man is someone who has been taken care of by my father-in-law, who used to be the director of the hospital and who always gives gifts when necessary. So as I've explained many times, he's not my lover. And as for what you're thinking, Barman, I have never cheated on anyone. Barman, do you remember the gift we sent you when we first moved here? Yes, I remember. It was a nice gift. I wondered why someone who seemed poor would send such a nice gift. The gift we sent to your house was also a product introduced to us by the man in the suit. Isn't that good taste? Is it really true that you're the director's wife? It seems like you still don't trust me. But if you really are the director's wife, why do you live in such an old, used house? If you're the director, you must have plenty of money, right? I can't believe the director's family lives in such a shabby house. I know, right? However, this house was built by my father-in-law. And my husband has lots of memories here, so that's why we're living here. I can't believe it! But actually, we're currently building a new house. Really? Yes, it's almost finished, though. Why didn't you speak up until now? If that was the case, you should have told me right away that you're the wife of the director. My husband told me not to say anything because it would affect our relationship with others if people knew he was the director. If I didn't tell one truth, I couldn't say anything else. And as a result, I couldn't tell most things, honestly. If you had told me the truth earlier, we wouldn't have had to go through this. I never thought I'd end up like this either. I talked to my husband because I didn't know what to do and it was my first time experiencing this. I told him that I was keeping silent about the truth, so false information was being spread and it was causing a lot of trouble. Wait a minute, your husband is the director, right? He must know that I'm the wife of the head of the internal medicine department, right? What should I do if he finds out about this? When I talked to him, my husband already knew that your husband was one of his subordinates. So I don't think you need to worry about it now. Is that so? I was trying not to hurt your feelings. I thought it would be better not to say anything to avoid hurting you. Oh no, what have I done? If this gets out, my husband will be so angry. Will that be the only consequence? What do you mean? Actually, I was chatting with her neighbor who works in foreign trade, and she mentioned that someone in our neighborhood was mistaken for cheating on a partner. She said she saw a young man going into your house several times. Who are you talking about? I have no idea who that could be. And we have many friends who visit us all the time, and my husband's colleague is a young man too. And could it be the young male foreigner who comes to my house? Is the person you mentioned? Is that the one who wears ripped jeans? The foreigner? It's quite unusual, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Wearing distressed jeans doesn't really give off the vibe of a foreigner trader, does it? Actually, I talked to my husband about whether such a foreign trader exists or not. My foreign trader showed us some photos, and we talked about it while showing them to my husband. A photo? Why do you have his photo? Him? He's an acquaintance of my foreign trader. It's a small world, isn't it? You told all the other mom friends that I was cheating. But what if they found out that it was actually you? What would they think? Mm, Morica, you can come to the gathering next month, right? I'll tell our other mom friends too, so let's keep this between us, okay? 
Please, Morga, be on my side. Barman, I'm sorry, but I never promised that I needed your permission to participate in the bazaar, so I'm planning to go there confidently, even without your permission. Besides, my husband's hospital is sponsoring the bazaar, so there's no reason for me not to go. Oh, is that so? I just received a message from my husband. It seems like your husband received some information. Information about your harassment towards me, and also about your affair. That's a lie. No way. What should I do? Barman, unfortunately, it seems like your husband is really angry and is saying he wants a divorce. No way! I absolutely don't want a divorce. I just can't handle it. Even if you say that, there's nothing I can do. Morga, please help me. Can you tell the director that it was a joke and I went too far with my prank, please? I'm sorry, Barman, but I can't do that. After all, you did this to yourself, didn't you? If I get divorced, how will I live? I don't have any money. If I get divorced, my life will be difficult and I'll be really troubled. Please, Morga, can't you help me a little? If I have a hard time living after my divorce. Why should I help you, Barman? You've been harassing me, haven't you? Instead of relying on me, why don't you ask your trusted mom friends for help? But... Honestly, why don't you just tell your mom friends everything you've done so far and ask for their help? I can't do that now. Why not? Because I think they've trusted me as a doctor's wife. If they find out about this, my position will collapse. I've been working too hard to build my current position. And if this is revealed, everything will crumble. If they really trusted you, would your relationship crumble so easily? Because I cheated and I stopped being the wife of the doctor. They would look down on me and probably most of the moms in class would never associate with me again. That's scary. Well, if that's the case, then even if you get divorced, you should have enough property from the settlement, right? You have nothing to worry about. Actually, the thing is, I spend a lot of money on luxury goods, and there's hardly any left. My husband probably thinks I've been saving money properly. So if we get divorced, it will all be revealed that I've been spending money. What should I do, Marga? Even if you say that. Please, let's think of a way to get through this situation together. Barman, I have neither the obligation nor the reason to help you after all the harassment you've done to so many people. I'm sorry, but I have to excuse myself here. Thereafter. In the end, I heard that Barman divorced her doctor husband. She kept asking me for financial help repeatedly, but I refused. She harassed me so much, and yet she had the nerve to ask me for such a thing. But in the end, we were able to participate in the gathering that we had been banned from entering, and it was fun for the whole family. And all the mommy friends apologized to me too. It seems that Barman had become a boss-like figure, and recently, no one could speak up against her. So they apologized for blocking my messages and avoiding any relationship with me as they were told to do by Barman. In the end, everything was just a matter of using the authority by being a doctor's wife and no one really opened up to Barman. I heard that Barman asked some of the mommy friends for a loan, but no one lent her any money. It's kind of sad, isn't it? In the end, there wasn't a single person who admired Barman. Well, with all the rumors about Barman spreading, it's no wonder she doesn't feel comfortable living here anymore with her pride. I don't know where she is now, but I hope she's doing well, and I hope she hasn't harassed anyone like me. Our new house will be completed soon, so once it's built, I'll have to get along with the neighbors and protect my family without involving my husband or children. Fortunately, the neighbor of our newly built house is a sensible person, unlike Bartman, so we can spend our time comfortably. A lot of things happened in this short period of time, but above all, I'm glad the misunderstandings about things I didn't do were cleared up. I don't want to experience something like this again. I just want to live happily with my beloved husband and cute children from now on. Get out of the house quickly. Huh? What's going on all of a sudden? Who is this? I'm sorry, but who are you? You are living in someone else's house and not leaving? What are you talking about? I live here. But what do you mean by someone else's house? This is my house. And who are you to suddenly say something so rude? I am Monan, the wife of your ex-husband. Monan, what do you want from me? Contacting me so suddenly like this? I want you to leave the house as soon as possible. What do you mean? Why do I have to leave the house? The house is where Sleta lives. It's a big house. My husband bought. Is that a problem? Why are you bringing this up now? There is a problem. 
It's my husband's house. How long do you plan on staying? Just leave already. We are the ones with the right to live in this house. Why, no, no, even if you say that now. Sleta, aren't you ashamed? You were abandoned, weren't you? Aren't you ashamed to live in the house built by your ex-husband who left you? Anyway, just leave quickly. You're a rude person for suddenly contacting me like this. What you're saying is crazy. It's not crazy. I want you out of my husband's house ASAP. When are you going to leave? When Neville and I got divorced, he said I could keep the house. So we have the right to live in this house. That was just a verbal agreement, right? Yes, but I agreed with what Neville said. I don't want to revisit this issue now. I paid you a lot of money. So what? That's because you and Neville cheated on me. I didn't do anything wrong. Besides, that's irrelevant. Yes, but anyway, please leave the house quickly. Is that all you have to say? Bringing up money now? Are you saying you're in financial trouble, Monin? Did you think you could ask me for help and it would be okay? Well, actually, I didn't want to say this, but I am in financial trouble. So please, leave the house as soon as possible. I'm sorry, but I can't comply with that request. I'm not leaving this house. My husband's new business is not doing well, and we're in financial trouble. I see. That's tough. But you still have to leave the house, okay? It's easy for you to say that's tough, as if it's someone else's problem. We're struggling with money. I don't care about what happens to you or your ex-husband anymore. We're divorced. And it's too much to expect me to help you just because you're in financial trouble. You hurt me by cheating, so why should I have to help you? Well, your family is wealthy, so you can manage somehow, right? Just leave the house already. Don't you want to help someone in need? Having wealthy parents has nothing to do with leaving this house. I have no intention of leaving. Besides, there's no reason for me to help you. You caused me so much suffering, it's your own fault. Oh, really? If Sleta won't leave, I'll make you want to leave. Monin, what are you planning to do to me? Don't harm us any more. Our daughter has finally settled down. Sleta, just wait and see what I have in store for you. Next day... Monin, what is it? There was garbage thrown in our yard today. So what? You're the one who threw the garbage in our yard, right? What are you talking about? I have no idea. Don't play dumb. Being able to throw garbage like that, aren't you disliked by the neighbors, Sleta? That's not true. Given yesterday's contact and the fact that there has been no harassment before, Plus, it's only logical that Monin would do something like this. Why? Did you see me throw it away? Even if you didn't see me, I don't want to be blamed for it. Don't play dumb. I can only think that Monin threw the garbage in our yard. You're definitely the culprit. Blaming others, you really are a nasty person. Well, what did you expect? Sleta is a greedy woman who only cares about money even if there is garbage in the yard. What a thing to say. You are such a horrible person. If you're going to have garbage in your yard, maybe it's best for you to leave that house soon. I won't do what Monin wants anymore. What do you mean by what Monin wants? If you harass me again, I'll report it to the police next time. Remember that? It won't be so easy. Instead of wasting your time like that, why don't you just leave that house? You're the culprit, aren't you? Monin's purpose must have been to harass me to get me out of this house quickly. 
So what? Isn't it because you're not leaving the house quickly that this happened? I knew it. It was Monin's doing after all. You're shameless. How far can Monin's bad personality go? Which one of us has a bad personality? When someone is in trouble, it's not someone else's problem to say, it's tough. Enough already. I'm leaving this house. I've had enough of Monin's harassment and nasty comments. Quit it. Huh. Really? You're leaving this house. Are you not lying? Yeah, really. I'm leaving this house as Monin wants. I can't believe things are going so smoothly. I'm so happy. It's a hassle to be stalked by Monin. Besides, I don't need to be attached to my ex-husband's house. I don't want to have any connection with you two. You understand, right? That doesn't matter at all. Are you really leaving the house? When? I want you to leave as soon as possible. This house was too big for me and my daughter to live in in the first place. I'm preparing to leave as soon as possible. Yay, you're finally leaving. As you wished. I'm glad it worked out. Of course, it's for free, right? Free? Yeah. I'll give you this house for free. Don't go back on your word and ask me to pay later, okay? Of course not. I won't say that. Do I need to cover the cost of the moving expenses and new furniture? No, it's fine. Promise me, alright? Don't forget. Monin, unlike you, I'm not dirty enough to think about taking money later. I won't do something like that. Ha 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 ha! You lost a man and a home, and your sour grapes are unbecoming of a woman. What? Your way of speaking. How bad can your personality be? I can't even express how disgusted I am. Even if you say that, I don't care. Just make sure to handle the procedures for moving out, okay? I'm leaving everything to you, please. All right, I got it. I'll handle it on my end. Ugh. It's like a dream to be able to live in that mansion. And it's for free. Please make the arrangements as soon as possible. I beg you. One month later. This is the best. What happened? What's so great? It's about this mansion, of course. Is that so? Well, that's good for you. Finally, we've finished moving without any problems, and we can start living in this mansion. I contacted you in such a great mood. Well, that's good for you. Being able to live like this is really the best. I'm really sorry for harassing you in the past, Leta. It's too late for that now. Let's forget about the past. So from now on, please stop the harassment. Yes, I won't do it anymore. I've got everything I wanted. I don't even need to harass you anymore now that I have everything I want. Anyway, this mansion is great, with heated floors and a spacious kitchen. It's really the best. To think, we got this mansion for free and can live a comfortable life. It's really wonderful. That's good to hear. Enjoy your new life. By the way, how's Sleta's new home? My daughter and I live in a 2LDK apartment. We've also finished moving and have finally settled down. It's kind of sad. What's sad about it? You used to live in this huge mansion, but now you're in a 2LDK apartment. It's not like that. That house was too big. So my daughter and I found a house that was just right. Now our apartment is very comfortable. Even if you're a rich man's daughter, it seems like you're treated coldly when you return home. That's not true. Well, Sleta, you also had a part in why you were cheated on. If you think of it as a lesson, it's cheap enough, right? <sighs> you're right. I don't understand the feelings of someone who cheats, but thank you for your advice. No problem. Well then, I'm going to enjoy my life in this mansion from now on. One month later. 
Sleta, wait. I have something to tell you right now. What is it? What's going on all of a sudden? Did something happen? The utility bill is insanely high. The utility bill? I don't think that concerns me. I've never seen such a high bill before. Even if you say that. You didn't say anything about high utility bills. It's unavoidable for utility bills to be high sometimes. That may be so, but I didn't imagine it would be this high. Your house is big, so I think that might be the cause of the high utility bill. Is it really this expensive? I mean, it's several times higher than the utility bill from the previous house I lived in. It's even equivalent to the rent of the apartment I used to live in. What are you going to do about it? <sighs> I see. Well, the house is big, so I guess there's no helping it. I never heard that utility bills would be this high. If you want to reduce your utility bills, you might need to think of some ways to save energy. Yes. I guess we have no choice but to do that. If you want to reduce your utility bills, then that's all you can do, right? By the way, what? I forgot to cancel the gardener. Gardener? Have you been having the gardener take care of the garden all this time, Sleta? Yes, that's right. From now on. I'm sorry, but you'll have to take care of the payment, Monin. What? That's troublesome. I'm already struggling with the high cost of utilities, and now you expect me to pay for the gardener, too? That's impossible. I see. Well, then, I'll leave it up to you, Monin. You can decide whether to continue with the gardener or let them go. It's no longer my concern. Understood. Then in order to save even a little bit of money, should I have my husband do it on his day off? Hmm. While it looks nice when the gardener does it, gardening is a difficult task that amateurs may not be able to handle. Plus, if you make a mistake, it could damage the landscaping. It would be a shame if your magnificent mansion were ruined. That's true, but it'll still cost money, right? Of course, you have to pay a certain amount to maintain this beautiful garden. Besides, Monin, you're living in a magnificent mansion. And if the garden is neglected, it would be a shame, I'm sure. You're right. Honestly, I'm struggling with money, and the cost of utilities is high, so I don't want to pay the gardener, but I guess I have no choice. I'll continue with the gardener. I think that's for the best. After all, a beautiful garden really makes a magnificent mansion stand out. That's true. Since I'm living in a magnificent mansion, this kind of expense is necessary. One month later. Hey, Slotta. What's up, Monin? Is it about money again? Yes, it's about money. I paid the taxes for our house the other day. So what's the problem? Is it my concern? I don't want to be contacted about money every time. But I didn't know that I had to pay the taxes for this house. There are taxes you have to pay to live in a house. It's common sense, Monin. I didn't know it cost so much to live in a house like this. Even if you say that, it's necessary to pay taxes to live in a house. I've been paying them all along. I can't keep paying so much money just because I live in a mansion. I don't want to keep paying so much money. From now on, Slutta, you pay instead of me. What are you talking about, Monin? I don't have the right to pay, and you, who live in a mansion, should pay. If you can't pay the taxes needed to live in a house, then maybe you shouldn't live in a mansion. If that's the case, you should have told me before I moved in. Then I could have prepared beforehand. I feel like I've been deceived by you, Sleta, paying so much money all the time. Deceived? I understand your words, but you didn't know about it and got a house for free. So isn't it because of that? I got the house for free but it was originally built by my ex-husband. You have no right to say that to me, Sleta. You want to live in a house, 
so I thought you would have checked beforehand. And it's not something I have to tell you specifically. If I had known it would cost so much money, you should have told me from the beginning. Don't blame me. I didn't think it would be so difficult to live here. It's not just the taxes. The utility bills are also really high, and I'm surprised every time. Can't you save on utilities by being more efficient? Of course, I'm doing everything I can. Like what? Turning off the lights when not in use? Not using the air conditioning? Even so, the cost of heating oil and electricity is no joke. It costs so much more than where I used to live. Yeah, the house is bigger, too. That's right. The house is so big that the rooms don't warm up easily, and I have to wrap myself in a blanket to keep warm. I never thought I would have so many difficulties living in such a luxurious mansion. Instead of complaining to me every time, why don't you have your husband earn more money for you, Monin? Well, my husband doesn't make a lot of money. Yeah, but Neville's income has never been great, has it? That's true. So I'm struggling to make ends meet, and that's why I got this house for free from Sleta. And yet, it costs so much money. Living in a mansion like this is so expensive. It's really difficult to maintain. The luxurious mansion life that I imagined is completely different from reality. Yeah, it's a shame to live in such a luxurious mansion, and Monin seems so pitiful. Are you feeling sorry for me? That's enough. It seems like Sleta doesn't have any intention of helping me, no matter what I say. Three months later. Sleta. What's the matter now? Is it about money again? Yes, it's about money. I have to pay a huge gift tax this time, but I never heard about such a payment. Really? Slada, it's always one payment after another, all about money. I'm really in trouble because I keep hearing things I didn't know about. Every time you contact me, it's always about money. Even if I tell you something, there's nothing I can do about it. Also, you leave everything to others, so isn't it you who's in trouble later? I can't believe that it costs so much just to live in this mansion. I'm paying an unbelievable amount. So I have something I want to ask you. Okay, I think it's not common to get a house for free, so you were lucky, weren't you? Yes, but I have something I want to ask you, Sleta. What is it? Why did you buy such a mansion? With Neville's low salary, he shouldn't have been able to afford such a mansion. How did you manage to build this mansion? Hmm, I wonder why. Don't play dumb. Explain it properly. I need a convincing explanation. Okay, I understand. And this house wasn't originally yours, Sleta. But it was Neville's, right? Why do I have to pay a gift tax? Isn't it strange? I guess he didn't tell you after all. What do you mean he didn't tell me? Actually, it was my father who bought that house, not Monin's husband. That's a lie. I've never heard of that. It's not a lie. I asked my father to buy this mansion for me. So I guess Neville didn't tell you because he's a show-off. That. He never talked to me about it. Monin, you might have known it because you said your family was rich. My father is a big company president. That's why I begged him to buy it for me. You should have told me that before you gave me the house. I thought you already knew it because Neville had already told you. I haven't heard anything from Neville. And besides, Monin, you never asked about the house, even though you said you wanted one. And in the end, I did all the paperwork, even though you said you would. That's true, but I never expected things to turn out like this. Well, first of all, my father was against me living in this mansion. Why? My father loves fortune-telling, and the fortune-teller told him that it's not good to live in that house. It seems that bad things will happen, so my father had been opposed to my living in this mansion for a long time. But you still lived there. Yes, I kept living there, even though my father was against it. Did the fortune-telling turn out to be wrong? Not really. I didn't believe in fortune-telling, so I just kept living there no matter what. But after I got married, Neville moved in with me. It wasn't a big deal until then, 
But what happened since you started living with Neville? Well, in the end, he cheated on me and we got divorced, and I received harassment from Monin, and my mother fell seriously ill. I see. So at first, everything was good. Then bad things started happening one after another, and my father started saying things like, move out. So that's why you gave me the house for free. It didn't happen that way. My father said, give it to the cheating couple to get rid of my bad luck. What? That's a terrible way to put it. But I thought he had a point. I don't need to cling to this house, so I decided to let it go at this time. I see. If I had known this before moving into this house, I wouldn't have lived here. Yeah, but you never asked. Besides, I didn't know Monin was someone who believed in fortune-telling. I don't have any reason to keep living in this mansion. It's just a big drain on my money, and it's really tough. But you've always wanted to live in this house, haven't you? Yes, but it's just costing me a lot of money, and there's nothing good about it. Okay, I've made up my mind. I'm going to sell this house and turn it into money. Well, actually, Monin, this house can't be sold. Huh? What do you mean? Why can't it be sold? This mansion has a mortgage attached to it, and it can't be sold unless the mortgage is cleared. What does that mean? Even if Monin sells this mansion, the money will be paid to the mortgage holder first, and you won't get any money back. Why? I don't understand. Can you explain it clearly? Anyway, selling the house won't benefit you, Monin. Why not? We're the ones living here, right? If we sell it, we'll get some money, won't we? You and Neville may be living here, but you don't have the right to receive any money from the sale. Ugh. It's really true that nothing good ever happens in this house. Monin might be right. It's possible that something bad might happen, just as the fortune teller predicted. Sleta, you knew everything about the situation of this house and still tried to give us a hard time, didn't you? I didn't think that way. But you knew beforehand that we would be at a disadvantage, right? I didn't think it would put you at a disadvantage. I didn't expect to let go of this mansion so easily, and I didn't know you were in such financial trouble. Sleta, you made us move from this mansion to a smaller house. So, did you hide anything that would cost us money? I didn't even think about that. Are you sure about that? I never thought you guys were in financial trouble. But you knew we were having financial problems, right? I knew you were having trouble with money, but I didn't think it was this bad. Also, Mona might think it's sad that we live in a small house, but we're happy living here. Why? Weren't you happy living in this mansion? No, it was too big for us. And also, I didn't tell you, but my daughter and I are living in a luxury apartment complex. What? A luxury apartment complex? Th that's not possible. I mean... That's why you don't have to worry about us living a difficult life like you think. Why can you live in such a luxurious place? Actually, my father put a mortgage on this mansion. Are you kidding me? Why does Sleta get to have all the good luck? Thanks to my father, I can live in this apartment. Wait a minute. Wasn't it your daughter who was cheated on, divorced, and then coldly treated when she came back home? Are you saying that you and your father get along well, Sleta? Did I say that I'm on bad terms with my father? I have no problems with him at all. We get along great. You just assume things, Monin. Wait. I thought you and your father were not on good terms, Sleta. That's not true at all. My relationship with my father is great. I love my daughter, too. We're very close. I wonder why you thought my father and I were not on good terms. He loves my daughter so much. We're very close. That's just... Why is it that you're the only one benefiting from this situation? I can't accept it. Even if you say you can't accept it, Monin, I'm sorry. While living in this luxurious mansion and paying high utility bills and taxes, you have no choice but to live this difficult life until my father pays off his debt. That's just... No, I absolutely refuse. You knew I would end up like this, didn't you? You're both the worst. The worst? Have you forgotten what you've done to me all these years? 
You stole my husband and even my home. Can you really call me the worst? I haven't forgotten. I'm not in a position to call you the worst, but... That's right. You took someone else's husband and even their home for free. I think it's only natural that you suffer this much. I just wanted to live happily like Sleta. Did you really have to ruin someone else's happiness to find your own? I thought I could find happiness. I learned the hard way that the happiness you build on the ruins of someone else's happiness is not worth much. I don't want a life like this. I'll give you back your husband and your house. I just want to be happy. It's too late to say that now. I don't need a husband who cheats, and I don't need this mansion anymore either. I'm living happily with my daughter in this apartment right now. I don't need anything else, and I'm satisfied with what I have. I hope this happiness will continue. So the mansion is yours, and I have nothing else to give you, and there's no reason for you to harass me, right? There's nothing good about living in this house anymore. I hate seeing you so happy. Is that so? That's too bad. It is. We have to keep paying for everything, and we can't live a comfortable life. We're living in a mansion, but it wasn't supposed to be like this. Did you not do your research before moving in? That's part of it, but that's not all. Everything is going wrong. Is there more? Yes, actually. Neville's investment company went bankrupt one after another. And all of our savings went down the drain. That happened? That's why you seem to be struggling with money. That's not all. Is there more? The old equipment in this house's plumbing burst, and we had to pay a huge repair bill. Maybe the fortune-telling was right after all. Also, ever since we moved into this house, I keep getting injured myself. I tripped and cracked my toe, and I can't stand all the cuts and bruises anymore. It's really unfortunate. Even though you live in this luxurious mansion, you have no money and no possessions worth stealing. You're living beyond your means. This is not what I expected. I know it's terrible to say this, but you should enjoy that lifestyle until your old age. It's punishment for what you've done in the past. I just want to be happy. Thereafter. In the end, it seems that Monan is working part-time to maintain her life in that mansion. It's not the luxurious life that she wanted, is it? In fact, it seems like she's living a life that's the complete opposite of what she wanted. Not only Monan, but her husband also lost his job due to downsizing and is now working in physical labor every day, pushing his body to the limits. It seems that both Monan and Neville are constantly fighting without any room to breathe after work. And it's not just regular fights, but big fights where objects are being thrown around. The neighbors can hear their fights, and the police have even been called a few times. The neighbors have started to gossip that the couple living in that mansion are hard to approach. Even though they're living in that mansion, Neville and Monan dress cheaply, and it doesn't seem like they have any extra money. They both seem to be living beyond their means. Because of their constant fights, the neighbors are keeping their distance from them, thinking they are a dangerous couple. As I thought, it seems like bad things continue to happen when living in that mansion. When I lived there, I experienced a lot of unpleasant and difficult things that made me tired of life. But now, I'm truly living a happy life. It was really good to leave that mansion. Now that I live in this apartment, things are moving in a good direction, to the point where I can feel it myself. First of all, I'm currently training to become an esthetician so that I can pay back the cost of purchasing this apartment to my father. Since leaving that mansion, my health and my human relationships have also improved. At first, I didn't believe in fortune-telling at all. But now that I have experienced such a positive change in my life, I think that fortune-telling is not something to be taken lightly. I want to continue to live a happy life and enjoy my life from now on. So I hope this happiness will continue. Robert, it's been a week since you left the house. When will you come back? Be mature and come back. You're seldom at home anyway. 
Your daughter will forget your face. I won't come home yet. I get advice that I shouldn't go home until you apologize to me. I think it's right, so I won't come home until you apologize. What is this? I have nothing to apologize. Who did tell you such wrong advice? Friend from work. He is a reliable and wonderful person. I don't think so. It looks like he is trying to ruin someone else's family. He always gives me great advice. I think he is right this time too. I shouldn't apologize to strangers easily. He taught me that is something that makes you less worthy. When I think about the past, I feel like I have been caring about what you think too much. So, I will change myself from now. I'll become a real man. Strangers. I'm your wife. And since when do you care about what I think? You've been selfish and you never listen to what I say. You haven't been home for a week too. That's because you don't apologize to me. I always had to think about what you think while having this marriage life. I had less time for my family. I worked so hard for the family finance. But you never appreciated my effort. So I had no choice but to leave home. What are you talking about? You have been buying whatever you want with so many excuses. And Robert, do you remember when was the last time you went out with your daughter? What? Why did you bring this up? Tell me. Well, we went to an aquarium. I think I bought a penguin stuffed animal for her. It was three months ago and the stuffed animal was a polar bear. What? Well, the view was amazing to remember, so I remembered it well, but we went out after that too. We went to a shopping mall too. That was more than six months ago. Was it? My memories are blur because I have been busy lately. Oh, really? I'll make you remember. You always go out alone when you are off. You told me you go out with a friend. The friend must be very important because the friend is more important than our family. To me, the person is just shady. Because the person is ruining our precious family time. Stop. You treat my friend with disrespect before you apologize. Don't you think this is rude? Rude? Of course I don't. You are not home because of this person. You don't even tell me a name. That's shady. Who cares about the name? You won't see him anyway. Are you blaming me while you're changing the topic? Shame on you. I didn't know my wife was that small person. I'm disappointed. How could you say that to me? Have you thought about how I've been feeling? Upset, right? Upset because I wasn't home? No. Of course you don't understand. When our daughter was born, you were a very kind person to care about your family. But since you met the friend, you became someone else in a bad way. Became more arrogant and selfish. Where you are, I don't even know. Well, I'm becoming a better person. It's not that I'm arrogant. It's because you're too strict about what I do. I've definitely become a better person because I'm doing what my friend told me to. He looked happy when I did what he told me to do. I'm sure that I became a more reliable person. It's your fault that I left home this time. It's not my fault. What have I done then? You left home all of a sudden. I was living a normal life. Let me tell you then. My day off, two weeks ago, I left home because of what you said to me that day. You ruined my plan with your selfishness. Your plan? Are you talking about when I went to my parents' house? You know then. That's correct. I had planned to go out with my friend, but you suddenly made your plan and left our daughter to me. I had to cancel my plan because I couldn't leave our daughter. Don't you think it's too unresponsible to leave without a daughter? I think you should rethink yourself before blaming someone else. What are you talking about? I had been telling you that I was going to help my parents to move. I had asked you to stay with our daughter because no one else could. It's your fault that you didn't listen to me asking. 
I don't remember the past, but because I couldn't make it, I almost lose my friend. Fortunately, he forgave me because he is not like you. <laughs> Unbelievable. You were worrying about your friend more than your family. I think it could be possible for you to leave our daughter alone and go out. Why don't you get married to him if he is more important? Maybe I will if you won't apologize, lol. Okay. It won't happen because I'm straight, lol. Why don't you apologize, by the way? You can't be that stubborn because you are just a housewife. How are you going to live by yourself? You have no options. You can't live without me. I think you misunderstood. First of all, I won't apologize. I don't think we can live together if you are this arrogant. You don't have to come back. What? Are you trying to be okay? You can't hold the life you have right now without me. Or are you claiming child support and living expenses? Then you are trying to steal my money. But I would say no to this because you are the one who wants a divorce. <laughs> Is that advice from your friend too? I don't think you're the person who thinks about life after divorce. What do you know? What if my friend was involved? So what? You are like a puppet that is controlled by him. If you think you've changed, tell me your opinion. What? Don't look down on me. I decide everything by myself. I'll go to the court for divorce if you won't apologize to me. You can't go back. What are you going to do after that? I have a friend who knows a good lawyer. I will be definitely a divorce which is better for me. So, do you want to apologize to me now? Whatever. You still need your friends anyway. I'm lucky to have fewer things to do if you file the divorce. Please go ahead. I'll prepare it too. What? Okay. This is the last chance. I'll forgive you if you apologize now. I'll come home tomorrow. If you promise that you apologize and don't complain what I do. Hey, I'm fed up with you. How many times did we fight since you're involved with a friend? It's the third time. The first one was when you went out didn't come home without telling me. The second one was when you went out when our daughter had a high fever. You became arrogant more and more and you put the friend first over me i don't think i can be with you anymore and can't rely on you for our daughter it's over are you sure you can't take it back you won't regret will you if you won't see the friend ever again and won't be arrogant then apologize to me and my daughter i'll think about it I was the one who suggested a divorce. Why act like you did? Because I won't regret it. Not like you. Is that all? I'm busy because I have to find a lawyer too. And what are you going to do for the child support? Are you raising our daughter? Of course. Are you? Well, you can do it. But I won't give up all my custody. Can you at least leave me the right to see her? Okay then. I don't think she comes to see you though. Anyway, be ready for the child support. Got it. I want my daughter to have a good life. I had a happy life with you, Sophie. Let's go our separate ways from now on. I don't think you can pretend that you are a good person only at the last moment. I'll forgive your words because I have a big heart. Goodbye. After one month. Sophie! What are you thinking? You didn't tell me there was such a thing. Of course. Because I didn't tell you. But don't you think that's fair? This was officially made by a lawyer. A child support after the divorce. And I need living expenses because I'm not working. Why do I have to pay? My friend didn't talk about that. You should have asked a lawyer before your friend. I have a right to get some living expenses because I am a housewife. He told me I don't need a lawyer because this divorce was supposed to be on my side. 
So you thought this is going to be a divorce with agreement? Divorce with agreement? What do you mean? You should have known it. You have to panic because you always ask someone else. We should discuss this through our lawyer then. I don't have a lawyer yet. You were going to do a trial from the beginning, weren't you? Of course, because you said no to paying for the living expenses. We both already had different opinions back then which I can't agree on, but you should be fine because you have a friend who can introduce you to a good lawyer. I am hiring a great lawyer too. I don't think I'll lose. Well... Where is your great lawyer, by the way? I said that just because I wanted to scare you. I don't know a good lawyer. So can you wait until I find one? I don't care. That's your fault that you didn't prepare for it. You're the one who wanted a divorce first. You should have found a lawyer by now. You better find a lawyer or give up and pay. And check all the documents because I'm claiming compensation too. Compensation? Why do you need compensation? I think you know the best. You claim compensation just because I choose my friend over you. That is so unreasonable. This is not finalized. The trial starts now. Why do you act like you're losing? Where is Robert, who is a real guy? I am a real guy. But more than that, I know you. I was married to you for a long time. I know you more than anyone that you are generous. You won't go for something that you are not sure that you can win. You are confident because you know you win. You think. You shouldn't say divorce if you knew about it. I thought I can win. If I do my best. And I had my friend. This is all because you didn't think it through by yourself. You should at least find a good lawyer then. Wait! I can't afford what you are claiming for. That's a lot of money. I can't face my friend too. I haven't done such a bad thing that I lose both family and friend, have I? So please, can you make it less money? I can pay for it without a problem if you make it half. You're not happy if my payment got delayed, aren't you? We are divorcing but we were family, so please. Who put the family less priority and choose the friend? This is happening because you choose a friend over your family. You still have no clue what you have done. And it doesn't matter to me if you can't face your friends or not. Why don't you keep being lonely? How could... I was working so hard for my family. I put my friendship a top priority because I wanted to brush up on my career. I might make you lonely but I was thinking about my family this whole time. I was the only one who was making money. I didn't know you were thinking like that. But it doesn't matter because we're getting a divorce. So let's not. It's not too late, isn't it? Also, when I think about what I feel, I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. It's too hard to divorce. I promise I will take care of my family more than ever. So can you give me a second chance? I don't love you anymore. Is it because I put my friend top priority? I am regretting it and I won't do it again. I make this clear for you because you are misunderstanding. It's not your friendship that was put as top priority. It's your mistress. I knew when you talk about your friend, it's a girl. And she is your mistress. What? How do you know that? No way, it's not true. He is really make a worker. And it's definitely a guy. Everyone knows. You must have misunderstood. Maybe you thought it was my mistress when I was with a female co-worker. You don't admit it then. But it's over. I asked a private investigator to check on you. So this is definitely not misunderstood. Then the investigator made a mistake. Because my friend is a guy. Really? So maybe I misunderstood. I saw a lot of pictures that you were with the same woman. 
That was the timing when you left home. I've never seen you with a guy well that period. Where is the friend that you talk about? Well... You know what? He looks like a woman from behind because he has long hair. Especially because he is skinny. So you won't admit it? I'll send you a perfect one. A beautiful picture that everyone can say is a woman. Then, the court will judge. I hope the court will believe your bad excuses. Alright then. I was having an affair. She's kinder than you and she accepts whatever I say. And she is young and cute. It sounds like I wasn't. Right. If you were kinder to me, I wouldn't have cheated on you. You keep making excuses then. I was weirded out because you never told me the name and saw the person too much. You can't hide your affair because you just keep making excuses. It's because you don't trust me. It's not my fault. Since when were you asking the private investigator? Soon after you left home? I thought it was weird, so I was prepared. Alright, we don't have nothing left to talk, do we? Please talk via the lawyer from now on. I don't want to talk to a person who lies and makes so many excuses like you. That's perfect. I don't want to talk to you either. I feel like all of my money was stolen. If I keep talking to someone who is greedy like you, I'm fine with the divorce. I hope you will regret that you dumped me because I will be happy. It won't happen. Don't worry. Goodbye forever. Thereafter. Since that, I did a trial and things like Robert was having an affair made the reason for the divorce. Everything got settled down as I was hoping for because of the evidence from the investigator. Child support, living expenses, and compensation. He couldn't afford compensation, so he had to owe the money. The friend, who was his mistress, was his co-worker. She kept telling him to divorce, and all the advice she gave to him was for getting us a divorce. But she dumped him right after she found out that he was owing a lot of money. And she got married to another guy in the company a few months later. Then her and Robert argued in the office. They both left the company because it was too awkward after everyone in the office saw the argument. He has two part-time jobs now and trying to make money for child support. And I got a full-time job after the divorce got finalized. I asked about any jobs at my previous job and they hired me again. I was able to get some contracts because I was doing pretty much the same thing before. Now, I make more money than Robert did and having a more wealthy life than before. He was seldom at home anyway, so my daughter doesn't seem to be bothered that he is not home. My daughter and I, we are having a peaceful life together. Hey, are you awake? Yes, I'm awake. What's up? Did you finish work? Actually, I was supposed to be able to come home a little earlier, but... You can't come home yet? Yeah, it seems there was a problem with one of our clients, so I can't come home early today. Is that so? A problem? Huh. It's always tough when you have to stay late. Is the problem going to be alright? This problem seems like it's going to take a little while. I see. I was looking forward to you coming home a little earlier, but it can't be helped. Around what time do you think you can come home? I thought I would be home by late tonight, but because of this problem, I don't think I can come home that early. I see. It'll probably take until the morning. I see. I understand. Don't push yourself too hard. Yeah, thank you. I'll be waiting for you to come back. Take care. Thank you. I'll contact you again once I'm finished. Okay, thanks. I'll be waiting.
I'm sorry I haven't been able to spend much time with you lately because of the big project I'm working on. It's okay. You work as an engineer, so we have to accept it and move on. I really appreciate you understanding my job. It's nothing. Just remember to take a break when you can and rest your body since you're always working late. Okay, thanks. Plus, you've been working ahead of schedule for our wedding and honeymoon. Thank you for doing that for us. But seriously, don't overdo it. Thanks. I'll be fine. Sorry. Don't apologize. But just don't tell me on the wedding day that it's canceled due to a system failure. <laughs> That's definitely not going to happen, so don't worry. Good, then I'm okay. I'm about to arrive at the client's place, so I'll do my best. Okay, but don't push yourself too hard. Have a safe trip. Thank you. See you later. Yeah, good night. Make sure to rest well. One hour later. Oswald, are you awake? My fiancé just told me he won't be coming home until morning because of a sudden work emergency, so come now, right now. I want to see you as soon as possible. I'm waiting for you to come. Actually, I usually pack a cheap bento box for my fiancé and replace it with homemade food, which saves us money. So I'm using the extra money to cook a feast for you and waiting for him. I can't wait for you to come. After we finish our meal together, let's enjoy the long night. Late at night. Zora, are you awake? Yeah, I'm still awake. It's rare to see you up so late. Is it? Sometimes I stay up late. I see, I see. You're still working, aren't you? Yeah, I'm still at work. But I took a break for a little while, so I'm resting. Is that so? It's a good thing that you were able to take some time to relax. There's something I want to ask you. What? You want to ask me something? Is something wrong? Isn't it about time for you to go to bed soon? Yeah, I was just about to go to bed. So I'm in my bedroom right now. It's usually your bedtime, so I was thinking it's rare for you to be up this late. Yeah, usually I'm sleeping, but tonight I was watching a DVD and ended up staying up later than usual. You were watching a DVD? What's it to you? What do you want to ask? I see. Was someone else there with you? Is anyone there? No one would want to come at this late hour. I've been alone at home this whole time. Why are you asking me that? I see. What's wrong? Why the sudden question? Why are you asking me that? Did something happen? You're acting strange. Are you okay? Actually, I saw the messy bed through the gap in the door. So I was wondering if something happened and asked you. Huh? You, what are you talking about? You're still at work, right? Yeah, I'm on break now. You're on break, yet you're talking about weird things. Whose tiger pattern jacket is lying in the hallway? Tiger pattern jacket? What's going on? Why all of a sudden? Where are you now? Your clothes are also scattered around. Did you not hold back and give in to the excitement? You're acting weird. What are you talking about? What's wrong? You're on break from work, right? The way you're talking sounds like you're at home. That's right. Actually, I am at home now. Huh? Are you kidding me? You said you couldn't come back because of work, didn't you? If you're home, just say so. I didn't seem to notice at all, so I didn't know if it was okay to approach you. If you can come home, let me know as soon as possible. Actually, the client today was just five minutes away from home, so I came home during my break. I don't want to keep making you feel lonely, so I took a break and came home. Oh, was that so? Then it's okay to let me know, right? I told my boss about the situation and asked for someone else to take over my work due to an emergency. 
you got someone else to take over your work. That's unusual. What's the emergency? What happened? If you go back through our message history, you'll probably figure out what the emergency is. Ten minutes later. Um, Moses? What's wrong? This is not what you think it is. Let me explain. It's a misunderstanding. Do you understand what I meant when I said it was an emergency? Um, wait a minute. This is a misunderstanding, so let me explain. My misunderstanding? Are you sure it's my misunderstanding? You see, it's just that you sent a message to your lover, thinking it was him, but finally realized that you sent it to me, didn't you? Hey, wait a minute. Answer the phone. It's a misunderstanding. Please, let's talk properly. If we talk directly, you'll understand that it was just a misunderstanding. I'm on break from work right now, so I can't talk on the phone. Besides, a misunderstanding? That's impossible, isn't it? You won't even answer the phone. You're on break, so can't you spare a little time to talk? Zora's honesty, offering up information about her infidelity, brings tears to my eyes. It's not what you think. It's just a misunderstanding. If we talk, you'll understand. I was just feeling lonely because you're always working, and I wanted to get your attention. It was all a misunderstanding. I find it hard to believe that you were just trying to get my attention. It's really true. Is the person you cheated with Oswald? My relative Oswald? Please believe me, it's not true. I wonder. Oswald loves tiger stripes, doesn't he? Maybe, but... Can so many coincidences really happen? If we talk on the phone, you'll understand that it's all just a misunderstanding. I've been calling several times, but you won't answer. I think you'll understand if we talk. So please, let's talk on the phone, even if it's just for a little while. I already said I can't talk on the phone now, because I'm on a work break, didn't I? Please, you... Even if I wasn't on break, I don't feel like talking to you right now. But there are things we don't understand unless we talk, right? I found a phone in a jacket discarded in the hallway. Huh? A phone? You accidentally sent messages to her fiancé, and Oswald doesn't even lock his phone. What's going on? Did you look inside the phone by any chance? I'm going to look at all the messages on his phone right now, and I'll see all the messages between you and Oswald. I think it's wrong to invade someone else's privacy and look at their phone without permission. Isn't it better not to pry? Yeah, but only you and I should have been in this house. So why is there someone else's phone here? Do you know anything about this? Um, that's... Five minutes later. Zora, I just saw the messages between you and Oswald. Please, can we talk about this? I already have all the evidence I need. What do you even want to talk about now? What evidence are you talking about? It's useless to keep lying anymore. I'm not lying. What proof are you talking about? There's a record of all the messages between you and Oswald on this phone. I've seen them all. There's no point in making excuses anymore. Please, can we just talk about this for a moment? What's there to talk about? Your excuses? I don't want to hear any of that. It's not an excuse. I just want to talk to you face to face. There's nothing to talk about. Spare me. I don't even feel like talking. I know that you and Oswald have been involved for the past six months. Can't you just admit to your infidelity instead of lying to me? Yes, I was cheating on you. I knew it. I knew that was the case. But it's all your fault. Why am I the bad guy here? I haven't done anything wrong. So why is it like this? You're always just working. It's my job. There's nothing I can do about it. You're always working, 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 and you don't pay any attention to me. Even if you say that, it's still my job, and there's nothing I can do about it. I thought you understood about my job. 
I know you work as an engineer, and that there are things you have to work on late at night. But one day, I suddenly thought about this. What is it? Even after we get married, this will continue, won't it? When I thought about that, I felt a chill, and I was attacked by a sudden feeling of loneliness. Did you decide to marry me even though you knew that? Yes, I did, but I was alone at home too much, and I was so lonely. I just couldn't resist and ended up cheating. Even if you say that you cheated because of that reason, I can't accept it. If only you had paid more attention to me, I wouldn't have cheated. But you agreed to the engagement knowing that I was busy. I know you're busy, but we live together and we can't even spend time together. Do you really think it's acceptable to cheat now because of such a reason? I'm saying that there is a reason why the person who was cheated on is also to blame. Do you really think that your excuse can be accepted? I understand that he is busy, but you know, that's just a front, right? What do you mean by front? Everyone would feel lonely if they were ignored like this. At least try to understand that. I don't think it's right to cheat just because you were lonely. I just wanted to feel the loneliness. Before cheating, you could have made an effort to be honest and say that you were lonely. And we could have made time for each other and done various things. But didn't you always say that everything was okay? Didn't you need me to say it's okay all the time? I never said I needed that. That's a lie. You always said. I understand it's work, so please bear with me, didn't you? I also suffered from loneliness when I couldn't see you because of work. Being alone and waiting is more lonely than working, you know. Don't you understand that? But I was working hard for our future together. You should know that much, right? I do, but I was lonely. I can't forgive you just for cheating on me with Oswald, and the fact that he's my relative makes it even worse. You're unbelievable. He's a relative, you know. Oswald always came when I called, and he's similar to you because he's your relative. We had good chemistry in many ways. I didn't ask for that. I don't want to hear it. You and Oswald are related by blood, so it's not a complete betrayal. What are you talking about? Don't start making excuses that don't make any sense. Don't you understand that it's more complicated because we're related by blood? Yeah, but... I don't understand what you mean by saying blood is connected and it's not a complete betrayal. Anyway, when I was with Oswald, I felt like I was with you. It was fun. I don't care about that. I am who I am. I am different from Oswald. Don't compare us. Because you are too busy... I was just trying to forget my loneliness with Oswald. It was just a game. You don't have to be so angry, do you? I introduced you to Oswald as my fiancé exactly six months ago, right? Yes. And then you cheated on me with Oswald shortly after meeting him. This is a complete betrayal. It wasn't immediately after we met. Stop making excuses. It's not an excuse. Anyway, I'm not seriously involved with Oswald. Can't we just talk about this? Why are you acting so high and mighty when you're cheating on me? You said Oswald would come over quickly, but of course he would. That's because he's unemployed. Huh? Is that so? That's a lie, right? Oswald isn't unemployed, is he? It's not a lie. It's the truth. Surely he has a job, right? Oswald got fired from his job about a year ago. What? He got fired? Is Oswald really unemployed? Yeah, that's right. He's been unable to find a new job since he got fired. Is that so? I didn't know that. But Oswald didn't say anything like that, did he? Of course not. Oswald's parents even issued a gag order because it's a family shame. Really? I never asked for details. He was unemployed? 
Even Oswald himself wouldn't want to admit the truth, because it's embarrassing. I can't believe it. I never thought Oswald was unemployed. I'm surprised. Didn't you notice that you were meeting Oswald even during the daytime? It's not that I didn't notice, but maybe I just didn't care. I thought he might be doing some kind of work as a remote worker with a job that allows for flexible scheduling. We never really talked in detail about his job. Well, that's understandable. It's just a fun relationship after all. It's really not the kind of deep relationship that Moses thinks it is. But being unemployed is just impossible. I feel like I've been deceived. Didn't you ask Oswald about his job, either? I don't think Oswald had any intention to deceive you, either. It doesn't really matter, anyway. Your relationship with Oswald is none of my business. Anyway, I've broken up with Oswald now. I see. So this is all resolved. Resolved? What's resolved? The cheating is over, so there's no problem, right? Breaking up doesn't solve anything. I'm leaving the bedroom now. Let's talk and sort things out. There's nothing to talk about. I have no intention of talking to you, nor is there anything to talk about. If we talk face to face, we can clear up all misunderstandings. There are no misunderstandings. The fact is, you cheated. That's true, but let's talk it out. Please, could you put the clothes we were wearing in front of the bedroom door? I have no intention of talking to you. Besides, I threw your clothes outside the front door. You should take care of it yourselves. But we were so caught up in everything that we didn't even notice that Moses had collected our clothes. Of course not. You can just keep enjoying each other's company. With everything that has happened, that's impossible. The bedroom door is also locked shut. Why? You don't have to go that far. This is no big deal. Think about what you did. Please just bring us our clothes. You don't need clothes. Can't you just stay as you are? Please stop with the weird harassment. You're the one harassing me while I'm working. What are you doing? You lied and cheated on me. I can't believe it. Bring our clothes anyway. We'll talk later. Is there any need to talk to you now? We don't need to talk about this situation together, do we? It's raining outside. I can't leave the room without clothes. Are you sure you can't just stay like that? There's no one here who would be uncomfortable seeing you naked, at least for now. What do you mean, at least for now? I just contacted both of our parents and Oswald's parents. Why? Why did you contact our parents? I don't get it. I explained to our parents what's happening now. Our parents are coming to this house right now. What? Why? Why involve our families? You don't have to keep contacting our parents every time. Don't you realize how serious the situation is? First of all, shouldn't you and I talk to each other? I don't think I need to talk to you anymore. You are really unreasonable. It's unbelievable. Why do I have to be blamed? Cheating is the wrong thing to do. It was just a fling. It didn't mean anything. You're the one who's thoughtless for cheating. You're being dramatic. It's not just about the cheating. You're not taking this situation seriously enough, Zora. What do you mean I'm not taking it lightly? Cheating alone is unacceptable and wrong. But on top of that, you had a relationship with someone in my family. It just happened to be someone who happened to be my relative, right? Someone who is a relative is someone you'll have to face every time something happens from now on, you know? I know that. I understand. Cheating with a relative is just unacceptable. It's unbelievable. You didn't realize that? I do understand. Then why did you end up doing this with my relative? I said it was because I was lonely. Do you think it's all okay just because you're lonely? I don't think that. 
but it was just a moment of weakness. It wasn't serious. Whether it was serious or not doesn't matter. The fact that you betrayed me is the problem. Do you understand that? Plus, we have the wedding scheduled next week, and we've asked a lot of relatives and friends to save the date. Do you really understand what you've done? Yeah, you're right. The wedding is coming up soon. Becoming a family member means that it's no longer just our own problem. Our parents and relatives will also be involved in the wedding preparations. I thought we could solve this problem just between the two of us, but it's not that simple. We've made decisions and worked towards becoming a family. Don't you understand that you're dragging everyone into this mess? I didn't think it would escalate to such a big problem. That's because you're too naive. I never imagined it would come to this. As a grown-up, you should have thought about it carefully. I'm really sorry. You're right. I took things for granted without thinking about them. It's too late to apologize now. There's nothing we can do about it. Don't say that. The wedding is next week, right? Let's talk it out and find a solution. There's no way to solve this, is there? There's nothing we can do anymore. I never imagined something like this would happen. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. Oswald and I didn't have a serious relationship. It was just a momentary lapse of judgment. Anyway, we've already broken up, and it's none of your business. You know that it's not something that can just be forgotten that easily, right? If you really feel sorry, explain everything to our parents yourself. I do feel sorry, but please spare me from having to explain it to our parents. What do you mean, spare you? Are you trying to run away from it? I can't forgive you if you don't take responsibility for your actions. I'm not running away, but I can't talk to our parents dressed like this. I can't do it in this state. Wouldn't it be better to show them your true self? Please spare me from our parents. I'm begging you, please stop. Think about what you've done. I can't show our parents my true self like this. You understand, right? But it was your own actions, right? You should have known that if things have escalated this far, we have to talk to our parents. There's no other way. Let's talk things over, just the two of us, okay? It's your own doing. Don't run away from it. I'm not running away. I believe we can resolve this through talking. No way. That's impossible. How can we talk and resolve this? Just bring me some clothes first, then we can talk. I can't talk like this, undressed like this. Soliloquy Without any clothes and dressed like that, she can't escape like that. Zora and Oswald seem to be fighting now, pushed to the edge. It's meaningless to argue over who's at fault at this point. Moreover, Zora is so absorbed in the argument that she's not even looking at her messages. She's really a troublesome person. One hour later. Hey, you. This is not the time to be fighting. My fight with Oswald has nothing to do with you. Yeah, I know it's none of my business, and I don't care about that. But all of our parents are here now. What? They're all here already? What should we do? Yeah, they're all here. How about explaining the situation while dressed like that? That's impossible. You know that, right? What should we do then? Don't ask me for help. You need to figure it out on your own. Anyway, since everyone is here, let's just talk via messages. I don't want it to be like this. I want to meet and talk directly. So please, can you somehow prepare some clothes for me? No way. I don't want to see the face of a dirty woman like you anymore. I don't even want to meet and talk. Messaging is enough. Can't you get the hint? That's not a nice way to talk. We're getting married next week, you know. Are you serious? You still think we can get married after this? It's impossible to get married in a situation like this. But I wasn't serious about Oswald, and we've already broken up, so it's not a problem, right? Not a problem? 
that's not true at all. The wedding is next week, isn't it? Canceling it now is impossible. Maybe it's easy for you to be so indifferent, but I can't do it. We have to cancel the wedding and honeymoon. What's the matter? The fact that you cheated on me, that you had a relationship with someone else, and that you betrayed me will never disappear from my mind. Do you think I can get married with these feelings? It was because I was lonely. Does that mean you can do anything just because you were lonely? As long as I continue this job, these long hours will continue, and I will make you feel lonely. So marriage with you is impossible, right? If you hadn't made me feel so lonely, this wouldn't have happened. Don't blame everything on others. Think about my position, being cheated on just because you were lonely. Yes, I understand that I've been making you feel lonely lately because of my busy job. See? You admit that you've been making me feel lonely. But I've already told you that this project I'm currently working on will end in a few days before the wedding. So we can relax afterwards. Was that so? I had completely forgotten about cheating on you with Oswald. I see. That's all it meant to you, right? In the end, you had fun with Oswald, saying that you were lonely. You don't have to say it like that. I have been working hard all this time, and my efforts have paid off. I will be promoted and receive a raise in the month after next. That's amazing! Congratulations! You don't have to be happy for me. It's none of your business anymore, and my work will only get busier. Why are you saying that? It's obvious, isn't it? I can't marry you. If you feel lonely, you'll just cheat on me. What? You're joking, right? You're joking, right? Our wedding is next week. There's no way we can't get married. I cheated because I was lonely. I promise I won't do it again. I can't marry you. I'm breaking off our engagement. What? Don't you love me? Until I found out about this affair, I was really working hard for you. And I had decided to protect you for the rest of my life after we got married and started living together. But this affair has made me feel negatively towards you. This is terrible. What I did was a momentary mistake, but I really love you. You can't say that when you feed your fiancé cheap food and cook delicious meals for your lover. If you really loved me, you wouldn't cheat, no matter how lonely you are, right? The wedding is already next week. Are you serious about breaking it off? Yes, I'm serious. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I can't marry someone who cheats so easily just because she's lonely. I refuse to marry anyone but you. You can't marry someone who thinks about their own loneliness and is involved with my family like this. It was just a momentary lapse. It wasn't serious with Oswald. Please understand. It doesn't matter if it was just a fling or a serious relationship. I can't forgive what you did. Are you really not going to marry me? Ah, oh, this is impossible with things like this. I can't even consider marrying you. What? No, please think it over. It's already impossible. My feelings won't change. And also, you're going to pay for the cancellation fee of the wedding and honeymoon, Zora. That's impossible. I can't afford to pay for that. I won't pay for it. I never expected you to pay for it in the first place. Then why are you saying that? From now on, our parents will discuss this together. But since you're the cause of all of this, you will have to take responsibility. What do you mean by responsibility? That's why we won't be able to come to an agreement by ourselves. What are you going to do? We'll leave it to our parents to mediate. Since the two of us won't be able to come to a resolution on our own anyway. So Moses won't talk to me anymore. Everyone's furious. They might barge into the room. I don't want anyone to see me dress like this. Anyway, bring me some clothes. I can't even talk to anyone if I look like this. I'm packing my things. 
and going to the company's nap room. This is too much. Does that mean you don't care about me anymore? The one you used to love? Yeah, I don't care anymore about who sees what, so it doesn't matter to me. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to my friend's law firm. Why? Why are you going to a lawyer tomorrow? I don't want to be involved with you guys anymore. It's best to leave it to a professional lawyer. Let's meet and talk before that. I already told you, I won't talk to you anymore. Enough already. I'll call you. Please answer the phone. Hey, you. Thereafter. In the end, I went to the company's break room and didn't meet with Zora or Oswald after that. I was so sick of them that I didn't even want to see their faces. Zora and I were supposed to get married next week, so it was unbelievable the things that turned out like this. Furthermore, it was really unbelievable that Zora's lover was my relative. I couldn't believe that something like this, a drama like in manga, could really happen. I wished so many times to meet in my dreams. However, the two who came out of the room ended up exposing a pathetic sight. And even our parents who saw that sight were crying while trying to stifle their voices. Well, that's to be expected. Zora and Oswald were apparently crying and apologizing after seeing our parents in such a pitiful state. But there was no way our parents could easily forgive them, and it seemed that they were giving them a lecture. If Oswald and I weren't related by blood, this big mess might not have happened. Zora's and Oswald's parents have been apologizing to my parents, but anyway, it was a chaotic situation. After that, it seems that Zora and Oswald were each taken home by their own parents. They returned home in a miserable state, soaking wet and wearing tattered clothes from being left out in the open. It's really pathetic how grown adults can behave. Of course, Zora and I canceled our plans to get married, so we had to discuss it through lawyers. In the end, the discussion was over in three days. If we had talked together, it would have lasted a lifetime. As I had told Zora, we demanded a lump sum payment of 5 million yen for the cancellation fees for the wedding and honeymoon. Both Zora's parents and Oswald's parents immediately acknowledged their children's faults and made them recognize their wrongdoing, so the discussions about the cancellation fee payment went smoothly. The two of them are continuing to repay their debts without assistance under their parents' supervision. Although I went through such an experience, I'm really glad we found out before getting married. From now on, even though work will get busier, I want to take my time and search for a loyal partner.